come from the same gameplay elements. That's the key. And the gameplay elements that the difficulty in Sacred 2 comes from are different. Namely, the accuracy that I was mentioning. The accuracy that I was mentioning. You can miss attacks here, but you don't have the reaction times of uh, Baldur's Gate, in which you can pause the game, stop, think about what you're gonna do, and I'm and I'm telling you this after playing Baldur's Gate on Legacy of Ball difficulty, which is absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. And we will never know in this run of the game, sadly, because I the game doesn't allow you to play on Nobium difficulty the first time you play the game. And I'm playing on silver, which is the maximum that the game is allowing me to play on. But, by the way, if, if you are interested in playing on Neovium difficulty, the highest difficulty, uh, over at the Dark Matter forums, um, there's a way to do it. They have kind of like a preset uh, file for you to inject uh, in the game, and you get um, a fresh level 75 character for you to... to to start right from the highest difficulty all together or like straight up uh, I thought it was a bit unnatural but I would have definitely done it if playing kind of like on my own without streaming uh, so yeah there you have it in case you want to play Novium difficulty right away that's the that's th that's an option uh-huh then as I was mentioning uh, sorry, I, I wanted to to, to 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 leave that as a side note. That I be, I, I know that um, kind of like I I looked it up some days ago, and I and I forgot to mention it last time that you can start from from uh, from uh, the higher difficulty. So, of course, if you play Diablo three or Diablo or Diablo two on Hell difficulty on the highest difficulty on Paragon in the case of Diablo three. It's gonna be difficult. I'm not saying that it that 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 only Sacred Two is a difficult game, people. No, no, that's not the case. That would be stupid, and it would make no sense. What I'm telling you is that the difficulty in Sacred Two comes from different gameplay elements when compared to other real-time isometric action RPG games, right? You have accuracy. You don't have the reaction. You have you. You have accuracy, which is a stat from a classic RPG, uh, from the classic RPG genre. You can miss attacks, which you can't in Diablo 3. Hey, we gotta finally get a decent stuff, one-handed stuff. Good. Hey, it increases my defense value by 13.8. Good, good. That was a lucky loot. Remember, as I've said, defense value is evasion chance. The naming conventions could have been improved as a flaw in, in, in this game. This stays here. It's probably one of the few flaws I can't stumble upon. But yeah, the naming convention is weird. It's not weird, it's classic old school Dungeons and Dragons conventions. Like attack and defense were classic Dungeons and Dragons conventions. From 3.5 or 2.5, something along those lines. So. The difficulty is much higher because when Bioware created Baldur's Gate 3, they had the to hit armor class zero system that um, that essentially was, as I've said, rolling a dice against the armor class of the enemy. That's why it was better to have negative armor, a concept that we don't see nowadays. But yes, essentially, you would roll a dice when you would perform an attack to see if it would land against the armor class of the enemy. And see, the, 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 the to hit armor class zero. Without, a, without any armor, the enemy had zero armor class. Uh, the ideal was to have minus six, minus five. And every time you would, Morrowind also uses this system, but it doesn't use negative numbers, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, then they changed it in, in Oblivion. In Oblivion it behaves like a modern RPG without ro rolling a dice every time you you perform an attack. Um, so yes. 
all of that happened in a matter of seconds and, and most reviewers don't realize it because they you need to play classic RPG games and know how they work internally. Sacred 2 is a much harder it manages to successfully combine elements that make each map much harder. As I've said, you can miss attacks, but you don't have the reaction time. You can miss attacks like in a classic action RPG, uh, in a classic RPG game, sorry. But you don't have the reaction time of a real time with post system of the classic Infinity Engine uh, games. Icewind Dale could also be used as example as, ex as an example. Does that hurt? Um, However, it doesn't end there. If we pay close attention, if we pay close attention, guys, according to everything that we've seen in these 17 days, there are also other stats that make the game much harder because originally the developers of classic RPG games didn't take into account isometric action RPG mechanics and vice versa. Developers of Diablo didn't think about, never thought about uh, accuracy. And developers of Baldur's Gate didn't uh, think about uh, quick reactions with real-time combat and with the clock turned down to zero, as I've said, by David Brevik and, and, and all of the story about how Diablo 1 turned the clock down to zero. As I've said, the first uh, stream of Hellgate London has all the complete story. So, see how from that meaningless, apparently meaningless, uh, piece of information, we can deduce that Sacred 2 is a much harder game. Because you have to deal with the hard parts of classic RPG games and the hard parts of isometric action RPG games. Well, there's my answer. The spider died. That was good. There's my answer. It can die, people. It can die. Well, this is getting interesting, but I have my other mount, right? Damn it! And I also died. So. God damn it! God damn it! God damn it. That's a lot of damage. Doesn't matter. We have a teleport ready over there. Fail again. Oh, well, we can, oh, and we can use Nag as well. Alright. Don't worry. We have the second mount and we have a teleport there. Yeah. The thing is that the spider is cost. <laughs> it had a cost of a million gold. <laughs> so, that wasn't good. But well, at least now we know. We know the reality of the situation. It dies just like the horse. So... Yeah. Until I don't get a bit more of money. I guess. Well, at least we, we figured out the uh, if, if it could die or not. Oh, well. <laughs> let, me add a, let me add a point there. And we also need to work on concentration, guys. Because our cooldowns are quite terrible. I mean... We are there. We are getting there. Oh well. <laughs> well, it can die. Does it? Does it regenerate or something? If I go back there, no, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, at least I test gameplay mechanics for you, yeah? so you don't suffer if you decide to play the game. There, you had a clear example. In Diablo. Well, I think in, in, in no game, your mount can die. I think this is the first game that, that, that... Yeah, in Skyrim maybe it can die. In Breath of the Wild, you can lose it. In Skyrim, can it die? I'm not... I don't remember correctly. Hmm. But well. Otherwise, this is the first game in which <laughs> that I've seen in which your mount can die. Thank you! With the help, we have at least managed to get rid of the spider yes. play control. Yeah, it was a pretty, pretty expensive... Destroy the source of the spider plague. Those 20 spiders that you kill were a good start, but I'm afraid that it's not 
a long-term solution. We have to get rid of the source of this evil. Let me guess, the, the dungeon that is over there. I suppose it's very many... Alright, so... Otherwise, it dies because of the, of the damage over time effect, people. I, it's not that I was that much of an idiot, but... It's because of the... The damage over time affects mounts. But well... Just like the... Um, accuracy... There are a lot of internal stats in this game that make it quite, quite harder than a normal isometric action RPG game. And quite, quite tough. Like in Titan Quest, for example, in Titan Quest, you don't have to worry about Wait. You don't have to worry about the damage types of this game. Like in this game there are five enemy armor types and resistances. And in Titan Quest, you don't have to care about that. Like, there's only one type of damage, for example. So, that's another case of how Sacred 2 combines gameplay mechanics present in classic RPG games and isometric action RPG games. Like in Titan Quest, yeah, you, you probably won't miss most of your attacks and everything, but... You don't have to worry about five damage types and five armor types. And you know how many consequences that brings. I know it it sounds subtle and stupid, but if you played the game, you'll realize, or you watch the streams, you'll realize that if you don't have different types of damage, you won't be effective in combat, for example. Like, here, let me refresh your memory, for example. For that. There you can see. Give me a second, I don't want them to kill me again. Anyways, they killed my mount, they didn't kill me. Ah, oh, yeah, they killed me as well. Let's go, I can wait to see the element. Yeah, see, for example, there you have it. In most isometric action RPG games, you don't have to worry about having five types of armor to mitigate damage. Like, think about Diablo 3. In Diablo 3, you don't have to worry about five types of armor. And in this game, you have to worry about five types of armor. That is a gameplay element that derives, that comes from classic RPG games. That's why I say that the genre classification of the game is important. Because modern games combine a lot of elements from different genres. And at the end of the day, you kind of like get a distorted version. If you don't play a pure classic RPG game... Like Baldur's Gate, like Drake and Sang that I've been mentioning, and also isometric action RPG games, pure like Diablo and Titan Quest. After you have the experience of classic RPG games, their gameplay mechanics and the gameplay me and the experience of the gameplay mecha of gameplay mechanics present in isometric action RPG games, you can combine them and see those subtle differences like the ones that I've been mentioning. That Sacred 2 combines elements from a classic from the classic RPG genre and the isometric action RPG genre. But it combines them in a it combines them in a way. Hang on a second. It, it combines them in a way that makes the overall combat gameplay system of Sacred 2 much harder. Because you can miss attacks because of what I've been explaining. Because you can miss attacks. But you don't have the reaction time times uh, of of Baldur's Gate, for example. You cannot. You don't have real time with post uh, a temporal combat system. A real time with post temporal combat system. The the clock is turned down to zero, like in Diablo. But in Diablo, you don't have five types of armor and five types of damage, and you don't have uh, accuracy chance. Like, all of the attacks land, as far as I can tell, in Diablo 3 and Diablo 2. Or at least most of them. Even if it's not... Even if there is an accuracy chance, I don't. I think there's no accuracy chance. 
but even if it, if there is, um, there's a huge difference with this game. You could see that without investing deliberately investing points on accuracy on attack value, I couldn't land the hit on that Ghost Dragon World Boss that we did to streams ago guys even if there is an accuracy chance the even if there is an accuracy chance the way sacred 2 treats that accuracy chance is completely different uh than in that in that in isometric action rpg games that than in most isometric action rpg games it's totally different even if there's an accuracy chance kind of like here it's a core stat like in classic RPG games. We did. Now I'm afraid. I'll tell you an answer and you're going to show an adventure like you. Shall we seal it ah, Crow, I, this I guy has been following me. Traitor. Die. There we go. Easy. <laughs> so, essentially, that's the idea. Essentially, that's the idea, guys. Um, those are all subtle things that sadly game reviewers don't pay attention to, and that's wrong. Straight up wrong. Why? Because I say it? no. Because of all of that I've been telling you for 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 roughly roughly forty minutes. Um, you need to be able to see the subtle the subtle influences of classic RPG combat gameplay mechanics and how they combine with isometric action RPG gameplay mechanics. Having five damage types is something that adds an incredibly complex layer to the combat gameplay mechanics, just like the accuracy. So, accuracy damage and armor types and if I had to say reflection chance I don't think you have that in in isometric action RPG games. I'm thinking about Titan Quest, I'm thinking about Grim Dawn, I'm thinking about uh, Torchlight, I'm thinking about uh, I don't know Shadows Awakening, by the way, great game. Highly recommend. I highly recommend it to you, people. Highly underrated. You have a 100% uh, review on the channel that we did um, some years ago. It's a pretty long game, just like this one. Amazing. Shadows Awakening. Uh, I'm in the Apothecary's nephew. These criminals captured me. See, I, I knew that the quest objective was somewhere around here, but I couldn't find it as I was <laughs> reviewing the game, as I was getting into my analysis. And 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 I knew that the quest objective, uh, but I saw it on the map, but <laughs> it was not there. I had to open the that 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 thing. I am uh, um These criminals captured me, and they plan to use me as a hostage to blackmail my uncle. They aren't real soldiers, just some simple brigands who got some uniforms somewhere. Score me back to my uncle. He'll pay a good price for the threat rush. Finally, this is a quest that we got. Remember, people, just so you have an idea, we got this quest at the capital, at Grishinborg, and probably, yes, we have to turn it, turn in uh, the quest over there. We have to turn it in over there. But we have another one, the hunting spiders. Let's get, let's finish this. Um, we're pretty close. Yeah, let's take advantage of that. Damn, this this horse is a survivor. It's kind of like the horse that has survived the most uh, attacks so far. It's kind of like this horse has survived everything. Yeah, so sad. I just lost a million gold with the spider dead. So there you have it. The custom mount can die, I guess. Oh well. Yeah, I've I've noticed that most of the time when I when my mount gets killed it's because of ranged attacks in this case it was the, the, the and because of damage over time 
That's why I always dismount. The, the key is to dismount as soon as you are hit with damage over time. Because I think it indirectly affects the mount. People, as I was mentioning, not only the accuracy rating, the accuracy, the attack value, in the case of the naming convention, not only the attack types, oh shit, see this is what happened, I'd rather die than losing the mount like that, I'll survive because I can heal myself, but the mount is not affected by the potion, uh, yet, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, damn it, my doppelganger is not up, they probably already killed it. Yeah, this is a terribly... The, the, the enemy spawn density in this zone is not only high, but also... They have that pesky damage over time. Wait, wait until we get into the into the dungeon. If we can make it to the dungeon, which is this one, we can... Please, please, get into the dungeon. Don't worry, the game works like that. Well, whatever. To hell with it. I'm pre ah, there's a door. Door is locked. Shit. Go, damn it. <laughs> Go, damn it. The door is locked. Damn it. No. Wait. 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 Go. In case you're wondering, this is a modded version of the game. That's why we have such a high spawn density. I kind of like made the game harder on purpose. But yeah, the, that damage over time, I was not counting that. That it affects this. I need my I need my doppelganger. If I can cast my doppelganger, I cannot reflect damage over time. That's the thing. And my main way of defense is reflection. It's a hard counter. It's a hard counter. It's a hard counter, and 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 the super spawn mob mod. It's also on top of it. It's also. Mm. See how many times my doppelganger is dying. Mm. Come on, damn it! Oof. Anyways, the door was locked, so probably the objective updated. Damn it. Poor people. That was way too much. Way too crazy. Ah, I ran out of potions! Well, damn it. I had 160. Damn. Damn it. Today's stream has been. Quite negative for the economy, which leads me to the point that I was about to say before getting killed. Anyways, the objective updated, huh? Because it was a trap. Yeah, I, I, I'll never forget this quest. It made me lose a million gold on my spider mount. And now, a lot of money on my potions. Don't worry. We'll restock eventually. Um, I was mentioning. Accuracy. Damage types. Damage, uh, damage, uh, attack types and damage, uh, armor types. The economy. Precisely. I was precisely about to mention the economy. This game has the economic system of an isometric action RPG. Like, in, have you noticed that in Diablo, in Diablo, you get a lot of money, but in Baldur's Gate, it's quite a slow process. Like, um, it's extremely slow. And 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 specific uh, when you get money, like you never get way to reach. This game definitely leans towards the farming mindset of isometric action RPG games. However, in terms of the loot system, do you say, Cabe? Mm, yeah, there was something I heard about. Okay, only <laughs> Tommy tried locking something evil up in the cave forever. Squire Talon is probably the only one with the key to this cave. That was almost too easy. So, talk to Squire Talon. He's the only person who can help you. Okay. Inquisition will take care of uh, we'll life. have to restock on potions, guys. We'll have to restock on potions. We'll have to... We'll have to restock on potions. It has... This has never happened to me. Uh, well, it has never happened to me. It, has, it hasn't happened to me in a good while. But those spiders made the impossible possible. So give me a sec so I can buy some potions and let's get back to it. We'll finish the quest after all. After losing so much so much money. Well, like After all of those sacrifices. The rural population is supposed to be the foundation. Let's do it. Anyways, nothing is worse than the ghost dragon world boss that we faced. 
some streams ago, like, that one left me at absolute zero. Let's get out of here. Like, I have to farm offline. For... I had to farm offline for it to, 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 to recover from... to economically recover from that. Uh, where's the vendor? Right there. Right there. Give me a sec. Real quick. Give me some potions. Probably it was a high level quest. There we go. Let me sell that. Ah, we can stop and also sell the stuff that... the legendary stuff that I need to sell. Because I didn't want to lose money. Uh, this one, the Wayfarer. We are using the same 20... Ah, no, it's the same as the one that we are using, but of a higher level. So, we drop this one, we sell this one. As I was mentioning, the economic system of this game is that of an isometric action RPG, guys. And that influences the gameplay mechanics a lot, a lot, more than what you might think. Why? Why? Globes of the Executive? Why? Because um, in Baldur's Gate, you cannot get into the mindset of looting and farming. You cannot farm in Baldur's Gate. You can a bit. You can, but it's the same idea as with the accuracy rating in, in other isometric action RPGs. There, will, there may be an accuracy rating, but it's not as influential as in Sacred 2. The same with the economic system of the game. Um, you can farm in Baldur's Gate, but it won't be as influential as in this game. Why? Because the gameplay mechanics, the loot system of this game, sorry, not the combat itself, but the loot system of this game, it's part of the gameplay mechanics, but it's not the combat. The loot system, um, it's similar to an, to, to, to an isometric action RPG. So, oh, see how many subtle influences I could find see how many subtle influences I could find this one doesn't reduce this one is the one that I wanted to sell because it doesn't have uh, in case you want the explanation it's because in the, it doesn't have regeneration per hit which is 0 0.7 here that's a, an incredibly important stat in this game that was the next one that I'm gonna comment precisely um, regeneration per hit is kind of like essential it's kind of like it helps you not to rely on your base um, cooldown times, and I wanted to. I had I had to sell those legendary globes here because if you, you can sell stuff on the fly, but you get less money. Like this, I get the full amount. Uh, chance to block melee. Chance to block. Ah, right. I see why I kept this one. This one has a six percent extra chance to block. But it doesn't have slots, so I cannot add a reflection chance. Goodbye. Uh, this one we have to keep it. It's basically the same one that I, the same one that I have, but it's of a higher level. So we looted the legendary stuff, one-handed stuff that are so difficult to loot. So we were quite lucky. So we'll keep those here. Let me reorganize. No worries. Real quick. Let's get back into action. Uh huh. So thread rush. Thread Rush was uh, Lost Ring. No, it was Thread Rush, right? It, yeah, it was Thread Rush. So, I think Lost Ring was related to, to the Thread Rush, or what was to find the Squire, or something like that. Thread Rush there. You yeah, have to go back there. No, the spider thing was over there. That one. So, see how many. See how those subtle gameplay mechanics can make the game much harder. Like, for example, the next one, we've already mentioned. Accuracy. Accuracy. The looting system. The looting system. It has the looting system of an isometric action RPG game, and the economy of an isometric action RPG game. However, the Potion usage is that of a classic RPG, kind of like it doesn't heal you completely. Like in Diablo 3, I believe the potions do heal you completely. Uh, the accuracy, the uh, the five types of attack damage, as I've said, that's the other way. See how they 
constantly influence each other, as we've been mentioning. Five types of attack damage and, and types of defense armor that's, that comes, that derives from the classic RPG genre. Baldur's Gate, Dragons, and blah, 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 blah. But you don't find it in Titan Quest, for example. There's only one type of, of, of damage in most isometric RPGs, like Titan Quest and Diablo. Right. So, yeah, it was that one. I was right. It was that one. So the objective should be over here. Precisely. Here. There we go. The Squire. Squire Tallinn. Yeah, it was this one. See? I was right. The cave in the forest? Yes, I know it right. All right. It's an ancient tale. Maybe we should have disposed of this evil a long time ago. The mission was a great success. Here we go. My ancestors failed. Mm, I smell a boss fight, people. I smell a boss fight in that, inside of that... Uh, I don't know if it will be... Yeah, it will probably be a dungeon. It will probably be a dungeon. Um, my ancestors failed. That was an unforgivable mistake. We'll take care of this matter. Here, take my daughter Lydia with you. She's one of the best hunters in the whole barony. She has the key to open the door of the dungeon that we saw some minutes ago. And we'll open the door. Good luck. Even though it is below my rank, I mean, I, I've lost I a lot of money <laughs> trying to complete this quest. So let's give it our all. Here I should buy more potions, another set of 32 potions. Just to be sure. Just to be sure, people. And let's get to it. I cannot teleport there, so we'll have to go right there. Uh, that's that, that's uh, the quest did update, I believe. Right, yeah, we teleported. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The quest did update. There we go. So, as I was mentioning, see how many stats and game and intrinsic and. There we go. And intrinsic combat gameplay mechanics I've mentioned that simultaneously influence the game. From the isometric action RPG genre, 50% roughly. And another 50% from the classic RPG genre. That combination makes Sacred 2 a real challenge. Like, as I've said, you don't have the 100% uh, the accuracy rating of most isometric action RPG games, Diablo 3. But you don't have the, the reaction time of Ball Wars 8, real time with post Infinity Engine games that I mentioned. Uh, that you can pause the game. So you have to need you need to have a quick reaction, quick reaction times. You have to invest points on accuracy. You have to invest your points on accuracy. I won't fall for that again. I'm not falling for this. Yeah, but not like I can do a lot. Like that damage over time is brutal. See, for example, this is a this is poison damage over time. That what you are seeing here. The game is much harder than most isometric action RPG games because of those five specific fully stocked. damage and armor types. Right? So... There you can see how they perfectly intertwine. The game perfectly mm, combines elements from the classic RPG genre, Baldur's Gate, Dragon Sang, Dave Windale, blah 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 blah, and the isometric action RPG genre, Titan Quest, Diablo, blah 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 blah. Right? So, we'll, we'll do this uh, on foot. I don't want to die again. I'll keep my distance this time. We'll do a fair fight this time. We'll give them a fair fight, not an easy one. It's easy to kill me when, when, when I have a million guys on top of me with all of my abilities on cooldown. And precisely, precisely, the cooldown times. The cooldown times. I mentioned this several times, that this game has the cooldown times of an MMORPG. So there we have a third influence. There we have a third influence. So... And generally, notice, the cooldowns in MMORPGs are longer than in isometric action RPG games. So, we have this spawn density of an isometric action RPG game, but the cooldown times of an MMORPG game. 
when you combine those two elements, the game is harder. It's harder because see how much time I have to wait. I either have to take care of the matter by investing points on the specific stats. See, for example, concentration reduces the regeneration time. Regeneration time is a convention, another naming convention of the game, which is actually cooldown. Or on the specific uh, skill tree reduces the specific specific abilities of the skill tree. See how many aspects of this game are in are kind of like a mix between gameplay elements from different genres, and when you combine them, you have positive effects and negative effects. Positive effects: the game is harder, and the game is unique. Like the ingenuity of mixing those elements makes the game uh, quite unique. You must be thinking, then what's the negative effect? It kind of like feels like it kind of like builds on top of the um, of the original ideas. How can that be bad? Well, there's a negative aspect that we can uh, take into account. You lose the purity of the original genre. What do you mean by that, Eraser? That you lose the purity of the original genres? Like the roles are not... Give me a second. Those spiders are quite nasty. I think I picked the most difficult quest out of all of the ones that we could do today. That's a lot of loot. Amazing. Good. Good. We're recovering already. Good. Um, what do I mean by that? That you lose the purity. For example... That the roles are not defined, like in classic RPG games. Like, if I invested and deliberately uh, allocated my skill points, everything, uh, all of them, on defense, I would have probably behaved like a tank. Not as a healer, that's good. But maybe as a tank or something like that, so you lose the purity of the roles. In the case of this game, it mitigates that law, that that lost purity by increasing the difficulty even more. That's why it's, I, I mentioned that it's so complex. But for example, another aspect that we lose the purity of the original genre. Um, damn it! This quest is completely brutal. Hang on, hang on. Here we go. Quickly, let's get rid of him. For example, for example, I think it's a positive aspect, but I know that for people, some t uh, sometimes it could be a problem. The fact that monsters constantly respawn and it's so difficult to reach your destination sometimes. Just a scratch. Granted, I'm playing with the super spawn mob mod, but it can be a problem. All there we go. Means. Another thing, for example, is that the game has a, a higher learning curve, and that's a double-edged sword that I mentioned at the beginning. Shit is full of spider. I mean, we're getting killed in here. But I don't know something. Hmm? A healing spell right now. Ah, damn it, the doppelganger. They killed the doppelganger. There. Good. Good, we got a foothold. That's the most difficult part of it. This also happened to me in Hellgate Land, and kind of like getting a foothold is the most difficult part of most dungeons. Did I run out of potions? Because I spent a lot. 28, yeah. So, I was mentioning, it's a double-edged sword. Because the initial learning curve of the game is higher. It's not, as people say nowadays, the game is not accessible. It's not accessible for newcomers. Positive aspect, once you get the hang of it and you learn to appreciate the intricacies of the combat gameplay mechanics, of course the game will grow on you. The question is if you have the tolerance 
threshold of getting through the first stages of the game. We mentioned at the beginning that that the game had that these old school games had a thick physical uh, game guide with them when they were shipped. Uh, here you have the digital one, but even so, I've been looking at it and and it doesn't explain you everything like like defense value, which is evasion rating, for example. If it's mentioned there, granted I didn't read 100%, but I think it's not mentioned. And for example, that's extremely important. Um, so yeah, a double-edged sword, a high, a higher than average learning curve. I would say it's on the highest side out of most, if not all, isometric action RPG games. But then a complex system that will certainly reward the player um, if you survive long enough to learn it. So, what was the objective? I am to confront the danger together with Lydia, the squire's daughter. Lydia will open the door to the cave. Yeah, we did it. Well, Lydia died, I guess. No, she disappeared. Guess we are done. Will it update when we go get out? Or not? Shit. Damn it. Uh, yeah, 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 the objective marker moved. There we go. Now let's get. We did it, 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 people. We, we, we did it. After some deaths, we did it. You see, it was more difficult to get there than, than anything else. Now let's get it. Let's get over there before I lose another set of potions. It wasn't a world boss, though they were pretty close to killing me. Considering I went in with 64 potions and I have 28. But it wasn't a world boss. If you want a great spectacle, look at the Ghost Dragon world boss fight that we did some streams ago. We did some. We, we did that one. Ah well, I don't know if it, if Twitch kind of like saved the bots. Don't worry. If we ever hit um, affiliate status, I'll be able to save the bots for uh, two weeks instead of one, and it will be much more. It will be much better if it ever happens. But see, that's a huge benefit. You can store bots for 14 days rather than seven. Lydia, by the gods, this can be true. Yeah, yeah, she's dead. Or she was the danger, or what's happened? Yeah, yeah, I think we're done. I got the experience. Yeah, that's it. What is it? That was the toughest quest Can't out of all of the ones that we've done in Northern Ankaria. So, what's the idea now here, here people? Let's complete. Um, we'll use the Griffin Borok portal. We'll use it to get over there, finish Thread Rush, which is a pretty long quest that we've been doing. Let's finish Thread Rush. And um, then this one, the brother, brother of one's brother in law. So, this one should be ready for. to turn in. Please, I need the experience and the money. We've lost a lot in that tough quest. That tough squ spider quest. So, yes, basically, this is what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, how the game combines gameplay mechanics from a lot from at least three different genres MMORPG, Classic RPG and Isometric Action RPG and how it combines them in such a way that the overall the fin uh, final experience is much harder because of what I said yes, see, the legacy drivers have at least fixed the, the weather effects that's because of the legacy drivers you were you brought back my nif my nephew, my ne my nephew. Sorry, thanks to the gods that he's still alive. I nearly abandoned all hope. You you have some thread rush too. Great, that's oh it's sorry it's very good quality. The there it's pretty small. Take this gold as your reward. My nephew will take you to the poor woman some medicine. Will take the poor woman some medicine for her sick husband. Won't you, Adrian? But be more careful this time. All right, that was a long quest and see we get thirty six thousand XP which is a lot for this game so 
All right, I'll keep this legendary to sell it at. Power emanates from this item. At, um, this is for. I know this is sold. I'll keep the legendary. Power emanates from this item. So th then I'll take care of all, of all of those people. Then we can do that. Now, now let's complete all of the quests. So, um, I, know, I know it was a long explanation, people, to take in. I know it was a long explanation to take in. But basically, most reviewers, what they do is just say, ah, the game is a Diablo clone. Haven't you heard that that trope? Like, that that <laughs> that shitty naming convention because it's wrong. People usually, most reviewers, most game reviewers call um, any game with an isometric camera and some RPG elements a Diablo clone. And actually, they should be called isometric action RPG games. Why? Because you can have an isometric game which isn't an RPG game. Eraser, I haven't seen uh, those. There are plenty, there are plenty. It's just that, for example, um, that they may be older or they are not common. Um, for example, hack and slash games, a lot of hack and slash games use the isometric camera. Um, God of War uses the isometric camera. Uh, just so you can see a modern one. The old school God of War games. By the way, highly recommend it. If you haven't played God of War, that's not a recommendation. That's that's a no-brainer. You have to play them, people. You have the PS Vita ports. You have the PS3 ports. You can play them on PCs through PCCX2. Um, in my case, I love the, the, the HD collection of the PS3. Um, so, yeah. Uh, God of War. I think the originals... I don't want to get in this debate, but it's better than getting in the economics debate that we got in last time. I think the original God of War games were much better, but to wrap up the previous idea, there are isometric games with an isometric camera that aren't RPG. That's my argument to, as to why calling them Diablo clones uh, is wrong, because it's kind of like Diablo clone is the equivalent of isometric action RPG. And and not all isometric games are isometric action RPG games, like in God of War, in the original Hack and Slash games, uh, there are no RPG elements. Another option you have is Marlow Bricks and the Mask of Death, a pretty a, a clone of that is a clone of God of War 3, and it's a Hack and Slash game. Uh, and uses also the isometric camera, for example. If you know that, uh, well, hmm, well. I'm not really in that line of work anymore, if you know what I mean. There aren't too many who would dare to steal religious objects, though. Maybe 2i, he's the only one I can think of. He used to have a secret camp, not camp, not far from here, be careful. These are some, there are some down and dirty brigands, okay. And, hey, there, that's a weird place for that. We explored that section. That must be a dungeon. Oh well, we can use the Griffin Boros portal to get there. So we can find the brother of the... What was it? The brother of one's brother-in-law. <laughs> we can find him over there, maybe. Okay, let's finish this quest. It's probably a long quest, so it'll give us a lot of experience and money that I need after losing all of that uh, gold. So please bear with me, people. We'll do that one first. I could do easier ones. I mean, I could, I could do shorter quests, but the idea is to recover the gold that we lost with that spider uh, quest there. With that crazy spider quest there. So, as I was mentioning, the... Um, not all isometric action RPG games, uh, not all so-called uh, Diablo clones are isometric action RPG games. You can have an isometric game, which isn't an RPG game. So, let me get rid of them, I won't lose my, my, my mount. This one should be easy to kill. Or not, they are dealing more damage. Yeah, it's been a while since we died. No, it's, it hasn't, the spider killed us. Mm. Then I'll check my reflection chance. Maybe my reflection chance got lower or something like that. The only explanation. 
Our cooldown time is improving though. We we dropped it from 26 seconds to 20, which is much more decent. So, um, is it through here? Let's see where the road will take us. I mean, when we get to the final analysis of this game, there's one thing for sure. I cannot award it less than 9. Why, Eraser? Why? Because the, the level design is so perfect, that the world is so massive, that... That only the quality of the level design is amazing. I cannot give it a 10 as well, because... Um, because of the crashes, because of the poor technical state it's in. That's why I include all of the aspects when I do my comprehensive reviews. But yeah, if I, I being fair, I cannot award it a 10 because of the poor technical state and because of how many times it has crashed on me. But if it wouldn't crash, it would definitely be a straight up 10. I, I, I bet I'll get to the reasons once we get to the final analysis, but if, if that day ever comes, <laughs> if that day ever arrives. Um, but I think we can only access that through the other side of Griffinboro. I mean, to think. Um, so, yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, but well. As I was mentioning, um, Give me a sec here. It should be through here. Uh, wait. Wait, wait, because we need to access that dungeon. It's incredible all of the European references that the game has. I mentioned this several times, but just as a as a quick, just as a quick reference. Um, the game was developed by German developers, and because of that, it has a lot of European influences that we've been commenting. For example, the floors of the houses are typical European, old, old school European uh, floors. Um, the layout, the, um, the, 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 the tombs of the German philosophers that we saw. For example, this is France, technically. Like you can see the fleur de lis there in the in the flags. That that that's that's France. Besides, there's a statue of, that says Bonaparte in the city. So this is technically France. They, it's it's a, it's amazing how, in terms of the level design, the the artistic direction of the level of the level design, they mixed kind of like um, a medieval fantasy setting with real life European uh, references. Medieval, real life European. Uh, medieval, medieval Europe references. Ah, there they are. We need to kill these guys. We've arrived. It, it wasn't a dungeon. It was just. A, it was a fetch quest. We need to kill the brigands. Pick up holy water. There we go. There we go. There we go. This See? See how much influence our cooldown rating, called regeneration time in this game. Yeah, if I had to say, as a flaw, is that the naming conventions are... are weird. But then I think about the fact that the game is from 2008, and I need to be fair, people. Uh, back in the day, this was a common naming convention, uh, because it was pretty common to call... Uh, to, to use it in Dungeons & Dragons, Tabletop Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 and 3.5 and, and 2.5. So... Being fair, the naming conventions are weird for us right now, in a modern sense, but back in the day I cannot judge them for choosing the, the name attack value instead of accuracy or defense value instead of evasion rating, because that was pretty pretty common to, to kind of like mimic the tabletop uh, naming conventions. But anyways, even if I would take it into account, it's not a terrible mistake. Here we go, this were the... The quest leads us to his brother. Uh, there we go. So this is probably the ending. Look, it's the holy goblet and the holy water vials. Almost everything is even undamaged. Thank you. Take this as a sign of my gratitude. Mm, let's see. Almost two Oof. Forty-three thousand, almost forty-four 
Southland experience that's a lot. I love the scaling system. If I had to, if I had to pick my favorite element of a level design uh, system that the game has, it would be the scaling. Kind of like forcing the player to you know that's a legendary. Forcing the, I think it's a great idea to force the player to always improve in a subtle way by making enemies always a scale to your to, to the player level to your level essentially that ensures the maximum amount of replayability because you can go back to the I, I mentioned this a lot of streams ago you can go back to the initial zone of the game I think that you can go back to the initial zone of the game and and farm it as if it was the, uh, as if it give me a second you can farm it as if it was the the the, the, the end the, the end game zone and it will be the same because of the scaling yes the gameplay mechanics the enemy variety will come into play like in that case because enemies will be much weaker in terms of their attacks and resistance uh, types at the beginning of uh, in the initial area of the game but the core concept is preserved like imagine that we're not doing a 100% completion I mentioned this, but it's quite important in terms of the level design. Um, imagine that you want to go back to the initial region to finish some quests that you haven't completed. Think about what happens if you're playing World of Warcraft. It's quite boring, because enemies will be level... 10, and you will be level 60, 50, and you'll kill them in one blow. And in this game, you can go back and, and enjoy the quests that perhaps that perhaps you didn't um, you didn't get to complete at the beginning of your playthrough. Like I cannot stress that enough because it's such an incredible level design choice that certainly deserves much much more play, much more praise. Uh, let's do Lost Ring. And with that, we are exploring a huge chunk of the map, people. Today we are doing a lot of side... <laughs> Shit. Look at that, I spawned... Uh, flying. Well, damn it. Look at that. You don't see that very often. It's the first time it happens, in fact. There we go. Now that's pr that's what I call precision. <laughs> that's what I call precision. <laughs> I spawned on top of the... Of the tip of the, of that monolith, of that monolith spear. Go damn it! I know it's the other exit. Sorry, the other way. So yes, yes. Essentially, um, I love it how it combines so many incredible gameplay mechanics, and how that exponentially increases the complexity of the game, like. It's been a while since I've stumbled upon a, an isometric action RPG in which I've died so many times. And you can never drop your, your guard or whatever you do. Opponent's health for death blow, blah 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 blah, no. Ushu's Inquisition is the one that I'm using, but mine is level 30 and this should be 45, 50, which gives me a huge advantage. So let me remove this. Let me place this. Uh, we had a similar situation with the Wayfarer here. I remove this. Let me remove this. Uh, now I need to get to a smith real quick. Give me a sec because otherwise I won't have reflection chance. And if I don't have reflection chance, that's one of the layers of my defense. Uh, yeah, basically we're going for... Is, I think I picked the most complex class out of all of them. If I had to say, because all, most of my damage is kind of like invisible, indirect. It's kind of like, it comes from reflection and my doppelganger. Like reverse polarity plus my reflection, my base reflection chance. Are, there it is, as me. It won't take more than some minutes. Um, it's incredible. It's incredible how... There we go. 
Uh, let me remove the runes from my previous gear. Let me take out... I can only take one out. I can only take one from that one. And then the Wayfarer here, I can only take one. That one. Uh, we have two, right? Or do we have to drop by the Rune Master for a sec there? Yeah. Yeah, we need more Reverse Polarity Runes. Two, two. It won't take long. Uh, let me get to the Rune Master. Uh, that house. Over there. So, yes. Yes, people. The game... Hang on a second. There we go. It's incredible how it, it combines all of those genres and gameplay mechanics. And it's definitely harder. It's definitely harder. I cannot remember a game in which I've died so many times. Um, I think we've died... I have the counter uh, in the character editor. I think we've died a hundred... Uh, more than a hundred... By now it must be more than a hundred and fifty times. Uh, so, yes. I think we've died more than a hundred and fifty times. Like that is only explained by what by what I've been telling ya. Like the game perfectly combines gameplay mechanics from different genres in such a way that the overall experience end up ends up being much much tougher. Right, so I wanted to find <laughs> A logical explanation. I wanted to find a logical explanation as to why the game feels and plays different. Like you can get killed. Uh, we're done here. Um, that why you can get killed and how that's a double-edged sword for only three. No, I should have one more. There we go. There's uh, the other one. That should do it. Uh, let me. Split the stack here. We need them separated. And now to the smith to recover our reflection chance. My class is probably the most complex, I was saying, because uh, most of the damage is, is kind of like invisible. Kind of like I have several layers of protection, but they're all invisible. Like reflection chance through this, like you can see here that I can mod my gear with runes to further increase my base reflection chance provided by uh, by reverse polarity so give me that one there give me that one over there there we go we mod the gear the crafting system we need to take a look at it again eventually I want to explain it again like Ah, yeah, I had three of them. Level 50, level 50. Ah, I looted two. Two level 50. <laughs> oh, damn it. See, there's... See, there's uh, and here I was thinking that I was <laughs> losing my mind. Let's sell them. I looted the same legendary gear uh, thrice. Three times. <laughs> God damn it. Let me sell them because I get more money by selling them manually at the... This is pretty interesting. I discovered this recently. You get more money by selling stuff kind of like to vendors rather than on the fly. Alright, we already have 72 more potions. Perfect. Uh, you get more money, which makes sense to reward the player for taking the time to go to a town and, and sell his his stuff manually, like you get more money. Uh, it's only worth it for legendaries though, because otherwise there's not a lot of difference for common quality items. But pay attention that even in those stupid details, the developers of the game took the time to pay attention and add a layer of um, of sense of reward, an extra layer of sense of reward, even for those stupid actions that you might normally think 
that 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 they don't make a difference. Um, another thing, another thing, something that I I think I didn't comment. Yeah, I didn't comment this on stream yet that I realized. Uh, the price of potions. Talking about, I discovered something new regarding the relationship between the usage of potions and gameplay mechanics. I originally thought, and that's the last uh, time I, the last time I mentioned the the topic, the relationship between the usage of potions and the overall gameplay mechanics. I mentioned that that's a pretty weird place to spawn. Let's get out of here. This is the worst zone. It's, they are killing each other, several factions. There's no point in remaining here. The flame sword guys. Um, I mentioned last time, long ago, it was in one of the first streams, and then I never talked about it again. I originally thought that the price of potions, the price of potions, was proportional to your total amount of money. And it's not. It's proportional to your character level. It's proportional to your character level. Like, every time you level up, potions get a bit more expensive. A tiny bit. And a bit, and a bit, and a bit, and a bit. And they become really, really expensive. But... It's a, it's a perfectly harmonious system that I'll explain to you in a second. As long as I don't get killed here. So yes, the prices I, I was wrong. My initial assumption was wrong. I mean, I had no way to tell. But my initial assumption wasn't accurate. The games, um, the price of potions in this game is proportional to your total amount of level. Now you might think that's a stupid, and that's a useless detail, people. It's not. It's not. Why? Because you can ruin a game 100%. You can ruin a game 100% if you don't have a proper relationship between the usage of potions and overall gameplay mechanics. Careful, careful, careful. That was close. I always mention Kingdoms of Hamal Reckoning. You can spam potions endlessly, and that can break your game. Uh, generally, you can add a cooldown, I always mention this, or you can, you know... Or you can um, add kind of like silence to enemy attacks, so, you, so the player cannot, temporarily, cannot use those potions. So... It's important to have a healthy relationship between the usage of potions and overall gameplay mechanics. In the case of this game, the balance is found through economic means. By that I mean that... But that, by that I mean that the price of the potions is what can prevent you from buying them. Otherwise, so there you have a barrier, there. and that price gets proportionally higher because, uh, according to your overall level, guys, according to your overall level. So it's a nice way of balancing uh, The usage of potions, kind of, kind of like the player cannot just spam potions endlessly. Then the price will increase. You will lose a lot of money, and you'll have to farm again for those potions. You'll have to farm again for those potions, and essentially the game is punishing you for dying, for not playing correctly. So yes, it's, uh, and if you take into account that, that the game has an internal death timer that essentially uh, makes enemies stronger, it makes the experience even more brutal, so yes. Conclusion of today's stream, 
the difficulty of Sacred 2 is higher than your average isometric action RPG game. But we've uncovered the reasons uh, why. Is it positive? Is it negative? For me, higher difficulty is always positive because it generally adds replayability. Like complexity adds replayability in a w in in a natural way. Like straight up, it adds a lot of replayability and complexity. So it's inherently, naturally, positive. Some people could argue it's negative, but... Some people could argue it's negative, but... I think they are wrong. I think that's objectively wrong. Like, the harder the game, the more complex the gameplay mechanics are, and if you have complex gameplay mechanics, um, the more you enhance replayability, uh, abstract thinking, uh, in terms of the player and the overall mental model of the game. So, I think it's always positive. Except when it gets to extremely crazy degrees. Like, I don't know what's the hardest game you've ever played, people. In my case, I would say I have no doubts about it. I have no doubts about it. Um, a lot of people like to say that Dark Souls is the hardest game they've ever played. The it doesn't hold a candle against the first Forza, Forza Horizon. Trust me. Must be wondering, Razor, why are you naming Forza Horizon? That shouldn't be a wrong. It, it's a game about ra It's a racing game. What are you? What are you saying? Yeah, I love racing games. But that's not the reason I'm mentioning it. Don't have room for this item. Probably almost no one played the original Forza Horizon. I think I said this when I did my final gauntlet of Hellgate London. The final Westminster Catacombs gauntlet. When we did it with with Dima. Don't have any room left for that. When we did the final um when we did the final gauntlet that I ended up doing, I had to solo it. I ended up having to solo it because I had no more time, I had to do it again. Uh, I mentioned why. Forza Horizon 1 has a nasty rubber band AI that kind of like, regardless of how good you play, doesn't matter how good you play, it will always catch up to ya. And because of the enhanced difficulty, it will always be a bit better than you. You can beat the game, you can beat it, how is it possible, Ray? Sorry if you just what you said you what you just said is logically and mathematically impossible to to complete. You can do it, but um, most of the time you will have to repeat races several times and rely on RNG to to in a lot of cases. To, to to win the races, so I if I had to pick the hardest game uh, ever without getting into old school games like Battletoads or crazy stuff that was basically designed to to Victory. to trip you over to, to 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 ruin your your run your walkthrough. Other than that, uh, other than old school games, I would say Forza Horizon One. Believe me. If you ever have, if you ever experience the suffering and pain of doing a 100% completion of that game, uh, you will know what what true pain means. Like, I think most people wouldn't even be able to to finish half of that game. Thank you. That's a ring. You'll see that the engraves. Everything goes as like that game is a prime example of. Uh, Of a killer learning curve, and by killer I mean driving the player mad. I honestly don't understand it, people. Now it's been two uh, an hour and forty two minutes, and the game and the game hasn't crashed. I don't get it, honestly. I don't get it. This game is driving me 
crazy, but be not because of the difficulty, but because of the crashes. Like, now it's been an hour and 42 minutes and it hasn't crashed. I don't get it. And at the beginning of the stream it crashed at 15 minutes. It has to do with the zone. Maybe. With... With... With the... Assets that it's cashing in. I don't know. But well. But well. Sunday we need... I, I need to do a top. For YouTube. For the... My top games for each genre. That'll be interesting. We need to begin doing tops. Like... That one will be pretty interesting. Because I, I see most tops over at YouTube. And they always mention the same fucking games. Like... It's so evident that... The gaming industry needs more... People playing underrated games like this one that I'm showcasing, like the ones I showcase. Uh, I guess that's a that's a self uh, proving. Wait a second. Help me get in the gym. I'm getting tired. Who uh, might be? My father doesn't help me understand. That's a that's a psycho. He thinks I'm just a loser because I never joined the army. Maybe he would want to leave me alone. He all right. This fisherman is. His father wants him to be a great warrior, wanted him to be a great warrior, and he is He sounds like a, sar a circle jerk point, but no, people. Uh, not at all. It's not a, sar a circle jerk point. Uh, like, underrated games shouldn't be underplayed. <laughs> like... If we had more people playing underrated games like this one, rather than Fortnite, we would have a highly educated gaming mass. And... I don't know, they wouldn't play shitty games, I guess. No, the they would be able to easily tell fast, real quick and fast, the difference between an objectively Terrible game and an objectively good game. Now I know that's a controversial topic, uh, but I know that's controversial because uh, nowadays, because of the <sighs> hang on a second, they're they're gonna kill me if I don't. And I don't have a second horse. Yeah, I'm be I'm beginning to see the reason why you can have two horses in this game. So if the first one dies, you can easily go back with the other one to to, 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 to buy it again. To buy the first one that was initially initially killed again. Uh, yeah, I can see a pattern there. Um, I know it's a controversial topic, and I don't want to get way too deep into metaphysics, but it's completely related. It's so related to, to what I just said that... That I have to mention it. Like it's a complex topic to to wrap your head around it, but it does explain you why we are in the current situation that we are in. Like the gaming industry is growing, but the quality of games is suffering from diminishing returns. Yes, companies may sell much more, but. They get much more money, they sell many more copies, but don't you feel that we're getting to a point of we're getting to a diminishing returns um, state? Like for me there's no doubt, but the point. To explain that diminishing returns, uh, I have to resort to metaphysics a bit. Uh, the entrance is probably over there. Let's continue on foot. Normally, 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 um, due to the influence of something called the Age of Enlightenment that happened some time ago in modern society, 
We. We. Society as a whole. Um, adopted the philosophical ideas of someone called Friedrich or Frederick Nietzsche. I don't know if you've heard of him. It's a pretty famous uh, German. I think he was German. I'm not sure about the nationality. He was a famous European uh, philosopher. Um, Friedrich Nietzsche basically uh, influenced another guy called Engels. They are all famous people. The ones they are famous philosophers that I've and also another one called Immanuel Kant. And basically, between those three, kind of like uh, created something called relativism, moral relativism. Moral relativism has a lot of, promise, uh, of premises, basically based, um, essentially based around the idea, but with different things because they were three people, three different people, and there are more that kind of like, um, kind of like they, each one of them, uh, coined a new part of the complete picture of the complete theory, like. They all had a bit of influence. So they created, they implanted something called relativism. Relativism basically um, works around the idea that there's no such thing as metaphysical reality. That reality is equal to the sum of perceptions that all individuals have in their brains or in their minds essentially so there's no objective reality there's no such thing as objective reality uh, they are the examples of my twitch page as you can see if you're watching this as a youtube poll you have to visit the twitch page um, it's essentially that it's essentially that um, yes this was the entrance let me kill the rats there there we go no worries Good, cool, there we go. Cool, 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 there we go. So essentially it's that. And when you, that brings a million of consequences with it. Extrapolated to game reviews, we get the idea that, um, that everything is subjective. Kind of like, the, you cannot reach any objective conclusions through relativism. Why? Because if this, because if metaphysical reality doesn't exist and it's merely the sum of mental perceptions of individuals, then when that happens, you are not meant and you will not reach anything, any objective conclusion. By objective, I mean metaphysically accurate. Out of two opinions, out of two opinions, there will always be one that, while it's not 100% right, it's not. I'm not. It's not 100% right. It's not perfect. It's to a certain degree closer to metaphysical reality, at least a bit, at least by a tiny bit, than another one. Right? A mental perception is kind of. There will always be a mental perception out of all of our mental perceptions, out of all of the individuals, out of all of uh, us humans here uh, on Earth. There will always be a perception that's closer to metaphysical reality. And because of that, that's, that's called, it's, it's the fallacy of relativism. The problem is that most people don't know how to combat it. And, we don't know how, and we, when you don't know how to combat that fallacy, um, that philosophical fallacy, uh, essentially you'll stumble upon a person who will tell you, well, but that's your opinion and that's it, for example. And, and this is my opinion. And I'm not saying that, that mental perceptions shouldn't be respected. Each mental perception, the doxa, the doxa, how it was originally called, uh, basically an opinion, a subjective perception, they should all be respected. Yes, 
but there will always be one that's closer to metaphysical reality. The worst and the hardest part of it is it's deciding which one of them is. But yes, essentially, essentially, that's the fallacy. Even if all mental perceptions should definitely be respected, there will always be one that's closer to metaphysical reality. To, of course, relativism doesn't have this problem because metaphysical reality doesn't exist. It's just a sum of, pers of mental perceptions. And with that, and with that, um, there's no objective reality. When there's no objective reality, a million consequences among them, all games could be good and all games could be bad. Just like all food could be good and all food could be bad, according to the eye of the beholder, as we usually say. And definitely, that's easily debunked. Try eating raw meat. It can kill, yeah? Because of bacteria. So, is it technically food? Yes, it's technically food. Is it good food? No, objectively it's not good food. There you have it. Have you seen anyone saying that... Th the problem is that not a lot of people use kind of like... Um, reduction to the absurd examples. That's kind of like a reduction to the absurd example. Uh, it's called, like, if you eat raw meat, everyone can realize that, that, that you die. It's absurd. It makes no sense. The problem is that with subtle topics, for example, in other topics, sorry, in more complex topics than the quality of our food, it gets more complex. And it's much harder to see which one is a... which mental perception is closer to metaphysical reality. But you... Th there's a, a positive aspect. This is the the absolute um, the, the the biggest contribution of realism, which is basically, as you can see, my school of thought, no mystery, uh, the one from Aristotle and Greece. Um, basically, and and basically, that's the greatest contribution that. Our, uh, Aristotle mentions that even if relativism gets to most of the population generally, because of how um, how compact it is, because it's a sum of mental perceptions and you don't have to uh, worry about it anymore. Like it's easier, it's easier because it's compact. It's a closed circle. It it's, it kind of like um, creates a feedback on itself. I'm impressed. You slew the orc. I didn't have some. Uh, I didn't think my son had it in it in him. Maybe he'll turn into a real man after all. I'm in your debt. Let me take it up to you. Try your luck. There we go. Pick that treasure map. Good. Hey, it's quite close. We can do it right away. Like um. The greatest contribution is that uh, even if relativism is easy, compact, and quite more seductive, the Aristotle himself mentions this, uh, realism contributes with something amazing. The instinct, the instinct that even if I tell you that I like raw meat, using the, the absurd example, so I make it even more evident. Even if I tell you that I that that is raw meat, if I tell you that I like it, you are gonna tell me, yeah, you may like it, but it's gonna kill ya. So it cannot be deemed as good for the general population. See? Realism also has a weapon, which is that that instinct that Perception is not 100% sub, uh, subjective, contrary to what 
relativism and most of the Age of Enlightenment ideas uh, say. It's not 100% subjective. What makes it objective then? Empirical evidence. Empirical evidence. You eat someone uh, at some point in history ate the raw meat and died. Then someone learned from that and corrected it. And like that, constantly. So, extrapolated to to what I was mentioning, that, that, that if people would play more underrated games, it's the same with video games, guys. Uh, they would be able to see those subtle gameplay mechanics and, as a consequence, they would play even more under, underrated games. And they would probably... Um, we would probably end up with games of better quality. Like... We wouldn't have things. This should be the place of my destination. Yeah, but I cannot enter that place. There we go. It was hidden. Ah, hidden treasure. Yeah, that's why it was a treasure map. There's a treasure chest. Now let's find out what's in it. Now I get attacked. Not bad. But not good as well. <laughs> Alright. Easy. Easy peasy. Uh, let me explore that section of the map and looks like uh, look at that people while exploring gameplay mechanics and and talking we covered most of, of northern Ancaria uh, I don't think we are gonna um, stumble upon a difficult quest like the one we just saw that killed our mount so let's get to island for mounts let's get back our our spider mount let's get back our spider mount i know the game will crash no 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 hmm i guess i was quite unlucky i mean not unlucky those those enemies were harder yeah i need to remember to all together when i See that there are of range attacks that deal damage over time, especially to unmount immediately. Hi, I'm back again. Ta 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 ta. This one has. Defense value, blah, blah. 54. Gruesome Inquisition. Ah, yeah, 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 we need the Gruesome Inquisition. Ah, we have three spiders, one for each. Um, talent, uh, skill tree regeneration. Now I get it. So I always have to buy the red spider. Because I use kind of like passive. Uh... Abilities from the other two, and I use uh, more active abilities in terms of the gruesome inquisition talent skill tree. Okay, good. So yes, we would have much more. Um, we would have better games. I'm convinced that we would have better games uh, if everyone would play kind of like underrated games like the ones I showcase, because. See my blood. Like that. You have the whole picture. You have the whole picture. And by the whole picture I mean you can compare games from the same genre. Like I've uh, as shitty games. I've seen kind of like uh, for example second I should zoom in the map a bit more let me get rid of these guys I'm not losing another million gold like this like remember anthem for example or other shitty modern games uh, like there is no room here for humans 
Why are you getting here? There's no side quest in this dungeon. Like, w people would be able to, to get to those intricacies of the gameplay mechanics much more and they would understand, first of all, why. Why a game can be objectively bad or objectively good. Like, take for example Sacred 2. It's objectively amazing. But why? Because of the things that I've been telling you for 17 days, people. The level design, the scaling, everything. When you cannot say why something happens, it's the same as not being able to see beyond what other may tell you. That's why. That's why it's always important to... to well, I always mention that uh, both abstract and critical thinking are, they should be taught more at schools, like, they are essential, like, the most possible. I, I remember this quest, we had to help the fisherman, here. Uh, there should be some more along the coastline. Check my fish traps. I'm such an unlucky devil. Like... Hey, but didn't I do this last time? I did only one. I left the quest. Uh, right. There we go. There's the other one. Like that. And uh, sometimes I feel that game reviewers uh, work like that, kind of like they don't know why they like or not like a game. In fact, I think Steam Steam users and, 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 and review users, the user reviews are much more accurate because of this. Because people who play games, who play a lot of games, can tell why, and that's the idea. Like, they can explain why. Hey, here's the other one. There we go. So yeah. Essentially. There we go. Oh well. Death comes over you. All right. I cannot. I, I don't get it. Now the game. It's been three hours and the game is, uh, hasn't crashed. I, I honestly don't get it. Uh, and it cannot be the zone because I've been all over the place. I, I honestly don't get it. I don't get it. This game is. Is a conundrum that 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 that. that I cannot explain. Like... It crashed almost immediately at the beginning after 50 minutes and then it didn't crash for 2 hours. Check all my fish traps, whoa... Uh, next. Yep. There we go. Thank you. Two-handed. Frenzied Rampage. Blah blah blah. Today we'll have to manage our inventory at the end of the stream, huh? That's for sure. So, quick, fetch the doctor from the local military garrison. Just look at this wound. Aren't you a fisherman? <laughs> I cleaned it once already, but it still got infected. I'll get gangrene if the doctor doesn't tend to it soon. There's a military garrison close, but that's all good. You do another favor, please go and fetch the doctor. Okay, okay. You just worry about the collection. Now it feels so smooth. Excellent. I don't know. Ah, he's pretty close. Let's get to it. Oh yeah, there you go people. Now, with my crazy explanation, now you know, next time someone tells you, tells you stupid, and out of reality, kind of like an opinion that is clearly, uh, evidently stupid, that there are, sometimes there are, <laughs> a lot of times there are, 
Uh, there you have the answer. It's far away from metaphysical reality. Yes, it's respectable. But even if it's respectable, even if, even if you want to eat the raw meat, I'm sure there's another viewpoint that is closer to metaphysical reality. And what I just told you is the reason why humans don't understand each other since the dawn of, the, of time. <laughs> oh yeah. Interesting, interesting. Damn people. I'm unbearable. I know. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Honestly, sorry. Honestly, sorry. I know that for me they are interesting topics, but hopefully for you they are at least interesting. I don't know if boring or not, but at least they are interesting. Yeah, I mean... Hang on a second. I mean, at least it's different when compared to... to, to, to the streams that I see every day, like... in... in streams I see every day, um... Except for some special uh, cases, generally, um, you never get as to why, why, that's what, that's why I, I started streaming, in fact. Because I noticed that, that when reviewing games and, and in streams, people don't get to the reasons why doesn't bother me. Uh, games might be, as I've said, your millage may vary objectively, good or bad. Unknowingly, most people are usually um, captivated by relativism and essentially will uh, will tell you this, that, that, well, just opinions. The game is good, the game is bad, I don't know. And, uh, and I don't know. <laughs> to hell with it. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Buy it if you like it, don't buy it if you don't like it. Like, like... That's the conclusion, but that's only the conclusion you can arrive to if you don't understand why it may be objectively or objectively good or objectively bad. But of course, you cannot even get to that without everything that I just told you. Gisbert sent you that old fisherman at the hand. What does he want? A glorious day for me. Uh, uh, the Inquisition, I mean. There we go. Scored the field sergeant to Gisbert. Well, well, well. So old Gisber hurt himself again. Things are quiet here at the moment. I think we can manage the uh, soldiers. No, again. I can spare any soldiers for this task. I will help you. In the name of the yeah, I'm beginning to think that the super spawn mob mob product with three letters. for my first playthrough was a bit extreme. But well, I've done worse things, people. I've completed Forza Motorsport instead of Forza Horizon. 100%. I remember the last racing Forza, the last racing Forza Motorsport 2 is not as terrible as Forza Horizon 1 because it's not broken, because the, it doesn't have a rubber band artificial intelligence, it has a, a pretty fair artificial intelligence, but... Treat a civilian! Me! That will make a nice change of people more. Wait a minute, I'll get in my bag. Right, let's go. Alright, we need to score the guy. There we go, it's, it was this guy. Like, the final race, I'll never forget the final race in Forza Motorsport 2. Um... The 50 laps Sebring prototype race. Like, it's a, four, it's a 40 to an hour minute uh, race. It's a final level. And you can lose in a second. And you have to start all over again because Forza Motorsport 2 doesn't have a rewind on the hardest difficulty. Then they added the rewind option uh, in later entries. But Forza Motorsport 2... That's why I always say that Forza Motorsport 2 is one of the greatest games of all time. I would include it as a top 15, top 20 probably. Not 1, not 3, not 4. The second one is special. It's definitely special because of what I just mentioned. Uh, you can get a portion of the real pressure that a real driver would get with that game. That's something that racing games, modern racing games, don't give you. See? Um, for example, uh, 
Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's simulation or, or, or arcade racing games. Repent. It doesn't matter because um, they don't uh, put on the player the pressure that a real driver would have. And believe it or not, Forza Motorsport 2 is not the same. It's not the same, of course. Let's have some respect for real drivers. But, um, contrary to easier games, that one will definitely... You have to play to feel the difference, guys. Uh, if you like racing games, people, you have to play it. I cannot recommend it enough. I recommend Forza Motorsport 2 and Forza Horizon 1. If you can beat those two, you're probably good for any other racing game ever created. Like, nothing comes even close. For different reasons. The rubber band artificial intelligence of Horizon 1 and the realism of of, of Motorsport 2. Uh, well, you can see that, that I'm, a, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, but I play all of the consoles. Like, I have a pretty good idea of all exclusive games from all generations of the three big console manufacturers like i have an idea i haven't played them all at all, at all. i need to i still have a long way uh, to go I haven't played them all but it's good to have a general idea of the three branches like otherwise this i love how different the style of playstation games and xbox games uh, are when compared to Nintendo games, like I love that Nintendo focuses so much on, on the gameplay mechanics, but you would be surprised to know that there are some uh, isolated cases in which the games do have an amazing story. For example, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, uh, never underestimate that series, uh, because between the randomized, the procedurally generated level design mechanics, and the handcrafted dun and the sorry, it's all procedurally generated. And the handcrafted storyline and amazing storyline. Uh, it has a pretty good story. The same for another ser series, the, the another um, another um, l uh, franchise. That's that's the word. Another franchise, the Pokemon Ranger series. Uh, it's also amazing. That one is a linear. If you liked Uncharted and Gears of War, like linear games, you'll probably love uh, Pokemon uh, Ranger, the Pokemon Ranger series. But not only that, a letter for me or so can let me give me a letter. Where's he? But see, even if I'm a Nintendo fa fanboy, I can tell you about the other two. Um, like in the case of the X of Xbox, the case of Xbox, um, I think they lost a lot. I think they lost a lot. I think so far the situation, uh, I would say that Xbox is utter uh, garbage right now. I have several reasons as to why I say that, but essentially, I think Microsoft has destroyed the identity of the brand. Long, long story. When you are at the lizard man realm, you increase this one by very interesting creatures. Oh, we are meeting the lizard man. Oh, what? There are also crazy lizard man conspiracies in this game. Like, do you know? Do you know how many great games the original Xbox had? The 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 one from the sixth generation. Um, first of all. It was a that console was a prodigy in racing games, which is why I was mentioning the the Forza series. Uh, we have to manage with that. This is an old quest that we have to. Anyways, we have to explore that section of the map. Um, let's get to this one. Manners Maneth Maketh Cobalt. Let's use a portal. We have a portal pretty close, so it's great. Uh, originally the Forza. More, uh, the Forza series was uh, developed by another studio called uh, Bizarre Creations and it was called uh, Project Gotham Racing and you have on, on the original Xbox only you have uh, four 
three, four, or I think four Project Gotham Racing games, and they are like, like for that, like the Forza series, and they are so forgotten right now, and they should be played much more because if you like Forza, the Forza series Project Gotham Racing is um, mandatory essentially. If you like racing games in general as well, and. Uh, before uh, the Project Gotham Racing series, Bizarre Creations even did one for the Dreamcast, the original, the OG Forza game, uh, the OG Project, Project Gotham Racing game, Metropolis Street Racer, and if you played, it's just like playing Forza Motorsport, so it's the original idea, so I don't see how that doesn't get recommended more. Other than lack of interest, slash knowledge, slash whatever, from game reviewers. Like, yep, pretty much. So, then the original Xbox had many more. It was, a pro it was an absolute prodigy in terms of racing games. We also had Midtown Madness 3, amazing game. Um. That one is lost to time. It's one of the few games that I couldn't make it work on my Xbox 360 because the Xbox 360 has partial uh, original Xbox uh, backwards compatibility. Uh, but it's not just a racing genre. I can get to other genres. Um, Blinks 1 and 2, Conquer Bad. In case of 3D platforming. Um, through here, um, but many, many more. Uh, just using my my memory here, but hang on a second. But I have them all in my Xbox 360. I have the complete collection, I just don't remember it now. Another thing, if we ever hit affiliate, if we ever get to 50 followers and affiliate status, we'll, I'll try to get a video capture so we can also sh uh, showcase games from, from consoles. You'll be surprised if that ever happens. So, not only the racing and 3D platforming genres, uh, in terms of FPS, this is a, this is um, an Easter egg for Yoda. Another Star Wars reference. A marauding band of dirty thieving orcs has recently started a painting drawn by Sco. Yes, the Sco, probably the most famous artist in the history of Cobalt art. Cover this painting and return it to me, and I shall consider your request again. Hey, this is not the main quest, and 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 the game. This is not the main quest, and the game does have a fully um, voiced uh, mission here. Uh, like that's amazing. Like that's amazing. This kind of like Yoda, yo. <laughs> I mean, what a reference, people. What a reference. I am interested in your assignment. What a reference. Manners, Macket Cobalt. Alright, so this is a special quest. This is a reference to Star Wars. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not just a 3D platforming genre. For example, Black. It's an FPS from that from the sixth generation, and it's also quite quite amazing. For example, and it's also quite quite amazing.
It's also quite quite amazing, and uh, and it's also lost. So yeah, pretty, pretty much people. Pretty pretty much. Is victorious. Hey, there's there's what we want to get. It has a lot of Star Wars references. Fishing. Right click to use. I think we got it. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's it, people. Miner smack at Cobalt. There we go. There we go. We go over here, and that's it. God, I mean, it's like so they do. So they did voice some. They did voice some uh, side quests. They did voice them. So look at that, people. Uh, it's not just the main quest that has that is voiced. So yeah, we have some other side quests that are voiced. Kill my gosh! Oh yes, perfect. Don't... I forgot that that he does talk. Find and kill this rat. I will not share the delicacies of the swamp with a fetid rodent. Alright. For Kerr. I don't get it. Now the game is not crashing, guys. I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. Right, so let's get to the Yoda to Yoda's mission. Nagash. Easy. Before I could even dismount. By the good lord of my flies, the rat is dead. Yes, it is. Now let me introduce you to Cobalt Etiquette. Listen carefully and repeat after me. Welcome, your noble greenness. Seigneur Lubon Roy Imoku. Our fish is yours. Sroy Sisifro. Thanks for all the fish. Ah, terrible accent you have. I will write it down for you. There you go. Another check in the book of quest. Hey, I just heard another lightsaber. Hey, it's a purple one. Can we do a wield? <laughs> yeah, we can do a wield. God damn it. <laughs> Another Star Wars reference, damn it. Another Star Wars reference, god damn it. This game. Now I feel like Dark Revan. Like this is the original setup of Dark Revan. God damn it, people. <laughs> Look at that. Now I feel like Darth Revan. God, I mean, another lightsaber. The developers of the game certainly loved Star Wars. Hey, we have ice damage as well. Freeze damage. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Alright. Uh, let me explore that section of the map. I think what, that today we've covered a lot. I, I, I don't get it, people, honestly. I don't get it. The game... The game... Uh... The game hasn't crashed for almost, I don't get it, for almost three hours, for almost two hours and a half.
and and the game hasn't crashed almost two hours and a half like really really crazy really 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 crazy <laughs> There we go. Crazy how it, it it crashes from time to time and then it doesn't crash. I, I don't know. Like I don't get it. Like how could it be that it doesn't that it crashes from one second to another and now it's not crashing for for almost three hours and a half. Mm, Why is it that I don't have that section of the map explored? Come on, let's do it, let's do it. Perfect, 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 perfect. Yeah, now I can see why I didn't explore this section of the map. I must have gotten out of here immediately. There we go. There we go, I guess. Stupid boss, let me get rid of him. Whoosh! Whoosh! That was fast. Impossible to eliminate to to to, to beat. Impossible people, a bit. Impossible. Nothing I could do about that. Oh well. At least I didn't kill my mount. At least I didn't kill my mount. Um. Anyways, I think we've explored pretty much everything. This section, perhaps. Let's explore that section. That section. Let's uh, then uh, manage our inventory because I need to upgrade. Hey, what's that? what's our reflection chance? I haven't checked it. What's our reflection chance? Ah, twenty-two point seven, almost twenty-three. Pretty good, I guess. Pretty good. It's it's a bit more than that, that, than before. Let me get to the. Um, Let me get to this zone. I want to have that explored. How many potions do we have? It's 57. Good. Let me let me finish that one. Let me, fin let me explore the rest of that, and let me manage my gear so we can so we can uh. I honestly don't know. Three hours and 30 minutes, people. Three hours and thirty minutes. Um, and the game hasn't crashed. That's good. I don't know. It's so weird. This game is the very definition of weird. Like it crashes exactly when he wants when when it wants to. Not a second later, not a second before. Let's explore that section. I want to have a 100% exploration over there. Like, I'm not gonna explore 100% of, of every corner, but I want to ensure that there are no side quests in there. Here's your reward a good force lining. They deal a lot of damage. Leave me alone, you're the ones that don't allow me to navigate through the map easily. There we go, we explore that. Explore that section of the map. And we 
go. Good, good. And let's get to it. Amazing. Okay, I'm beginning to notice that 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 your proficiency with weapons doesn't affect a lot. Like it's better to have up to date weapons than it's better to have up-to-date weapons than than the weapon type that you are most proficient with. Like I've noticed that. Well, I don't know if I should be happy or what, but the game doesn't seem to be crashing now. Doesn't seem to be crashing. Fit to, to be crashing. Manners Maketh Kobold. Let's finish that. Hey, that was a Yoda reference there. Pretty good. Definitely. The developers of the game loved Star Wars. They definitely loved Star Wars. Alright. Today, people, we explored a lot of aspects that the game... A lot of subtle aspects that the game has to offer. Um, so, yes... Basically, I wanted to, to explore how the gameplay mechanics would. Uh, this should be the place of my destination. At the village full. <laughs> they were linked. The quests were linked. Will not fester. I give you this heart of the village jester. Now you must go. I have things to do. After all, I am the only fool in the village. The task has been accomplished. I really should clean up in here sometime. Damn it. Damn it, that's probably a legendary. Let me sell that, let me sell that. Power King of Swallows, Dragon Mage, damn it. Now I feel stupid. Just for the Dragon Mage, ha. Huh. I feel so discriminated in this game, like n nothing is, um... Nothing's for the Inquisitor, like, the, it's so... So, so tough to loot a one-handed, a one-handed stuff. <laughs> he also rocks. <laughs> okay. Um. Today we managed to pull them, that to push the main quest all the way there. So if I have, uh, uh where's my? I'll ah, uh, we'll return at that resurrection monolith, but we can use this this portal next week. Okay, we'll get over there. We'll get to that. Okay, let me loot that. Uh, let me check my uh, improve my gear a bit. We need to we need to we need to improve our gear a bit. Sell some stuff and buy some more potions. Like we'll do that. And this is it for today, nice. people. As I always say. Uh, thanks to anyone who might have taken the time to watch this as a YouTube ball or a Twitch ball or a Twitch ball. Thanks to all subscribers of the YouTube channel and all followers of the Twitch uh, channel from the bottom of my heart. Well, I don't see why I wouldn't sell this shit. Like, ah, it's only for the high elf, anyways. Thanks to all of you people, truly from the bottom of my heart. As I always say, special thanks to you, Scarlet Dragoon, for dropping by the stream. Thanks to anyone who might have taken the time to watch this um, well being streamed, of course. A special thanks to you. You always encourage me to personally um, continue showcasing all of these forgotten games that certainly deserved much more praise, but sadly didn't get the the spotlight they deserved back in the day as i always mentioned and thanks thanks people from the bottom of my heart to all of you so um with all of that said um i will see if for next time i can um let me summon my goblin if for next time i can get um Get a clean installation of the legacy physics drivers. I'll have plenty of time. 
and and with that I'll be able to get um, maybe I'll be able to uh, prevent the game from crashing once and for all. Go. Who knows? Who knows? But well, it'll be worth a try. So, Illegal's Consistency, I already have one there. Alright, we can sell it, we already have that one. Righteous Hands of the Celestial, and that one, we have to sell all of that stuff. People, we sell this one, we sell this one. And... This is it. Yeah. The A should clean up in here. Should clean up a bit. Let me remove that. Let me remove all so many rings. Hey, regeneration per hit. That one is pretty good. Ice attack value. Yeah, no point in having this one with it. when we have attack and defense. Let me send a chance to find valuable. Start to block ranged. This one may be useful to engrave it in some in some robe ranged defense value plus 18 that's a lot that's a lot people chance to knock back opponents magic poison yep. attack value will never use that when we can combine both stats like this one 11 and 11, we have 10 and 10, 9 and 9. We'll go for 11 and 11. There we go. Alchemy and hit point regeneration. No. Mm, damage 8.5 is pretty good because it increases all types of damage. Oh well. Well, I'll figure all of this out. Off stream, perhaps we can and deal with all of this off stream, anyways, because I have to go. So yeah, uh, let me also uh, teleport and restock on potions. Let me restock on potions. We need that desperately. We can't keep going without all of our potions. There we go. Um, the peasants shall tremble with fear. Here comes the Inquisition. Yeah, I don't get it. Now you can see that the game hasn't crashed for a while. I, don't, I, I honestly don't get it. Like, now it doesn't feel like it's gonna crash ever. Hundred and twenty one. Good. We are back on track. Not too shabby. Pretty good. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it's been my pleasure sharing this Thursday of Sacred 2 with all of you. And we'll leave it here, we'll probably restart at, at, at that monolith. We'll probably, we'll probably restart at that monolith next time, yeah. So, thanks from the bottom of my heart, to anyone who might have taken the time. Ah, we have one here. Yeah, I think... Ah, uh, yeah, no, but we still have to go over there and we don't have... Ah, uh, yeah, I have the, the portal here. Nobody's better to have it there. I'll leave it there. I better restore it there. Here I have the portal. See, for example, there's no point. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been my pleasure sharing this Thursday of Sacred 2 with all of you. The game, apparently, now it's not crashing. I don't know uh, what to say. It's so unpredictable that I don't know what to what, what to do about this game. Uh, anyways, I'll do a clean install. So... So, so it will probably be even better, I guess. It'll probably be even better. Today, I wanted to to take a look at those gameplay influences from different genres. So, so amazing, amazing. So today we analyze a lot of important aspects that the game has to offer. I don't know. Now it's not crashing. I don't know what to tell you, honestly. I don't I don't know guys what to tell you to be honest I don't know it's a pretty crazy ride if you ask me it's an absolutely crazy ride so yep
pretty, pretty much. An absolutely crazy ride. So, yeah. So, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you may pleasure, I say I always say thanks to anyone who might have taken the time to watch uh, my streams as a, as a Twitch board or a YouTube board. So, huge thanks. Huge thanks to all of you. And see you all on Thursday when we'll continue exploring all of the amazing uh, all the amazing aspects that Northern Anacaria has to offer to us. I'm glad that we got our mount today. We got our mount, we did a lot of things. It's only been almost three hours, people. So, well, hope you enjoyed my, my metaphysics um, talk. Hope you enjoyed uh, <laughs> all of my uh, my crazy stuff, as I said. Sorry if it... If it uh, if it bothers you, people, just don't hesitate to tell me. But, but, but yeah, it, it explains a lot of the things as to why we have um, reviews of games that aren't kind of like perfectly accurate at all. Like, we could have much better, much better reviews and, 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 and community like that. I'm convinced of it. Ladies and gentlemen. It's been my pleasure sharing this Thursday of Sacred 2 with all of you. So we'll see each other on Tuesday. And we have pretty much completed most of Northern and Carrier. We still have some a bit more, but, but we are pretty, pretty close. Like, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. How the level design is influenced by classic RPG games and isometric action RPG games. It's, it's absolutely amazing. It makes a perfect blend. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Besides, we did that Yoda mission. The game has several references to Star Wars. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been my pleasure. See you all on Tuesday. Have a great weekend of video games. And we will resume on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. And there we go. Uh, Damn it. We also explore the history of Xbox <laughs> and and everything. So incredible, incredible, incredible. Quite, quite amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great weekend. See you all on Tuesday. I'll install the new physics engine legacy drivers. So we should uh, this time the game hasn't crashed for the second time. I think we'll be able to fix it. Stay tuned on that. Well, I'll, I'll see if, you, if I can reinstall them and, and, and show you because the frame rate can be locked and, and, and the game plays pretty, pretty well. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. See you all on Tuesday.